Hello, and welcome to The Craftsman Show. My name is your host, The Craftsman. I hope you're doing good today. I wanted to show y'all a little video about how did I make my spoon rings. Some of y'all may have seen on my Insta shop that I sell these spoon rings, and this also is what I do locally. The very first time I ever made a spoon ring, it took me probably two hours, a little more than two hours, to make one ring. And then when I saw the price that they sell for, I realized that I needed to come up with a way to make them faster so that I can do more in a day. And so I wanted to show y'all how that you can make spoon rings efficiently and quickly. And this is some of the tools that I use to do it. The number one tool that I use is this bending jig by Pepe Tools. I would say that I've had it for a few years, as you can tell, it's got a little bit of age to it, but it's lasted me a few years and it's already paid itself back and how much time did it save me. And this is definitely a time saving device. The way it works is really simple. Let me demonstrate it. Just like that. This was a piece of shiny little piece of copper that I had. And you notice that when I bent it, it got some nicks on it. Well, it'll solve that problem. All that I would have to do is simply take out the metal jaw and replace it. And replace it with the nylon jaw. And as you can see, the original finish is protected. And it comes with a variety of pieces like I'll show you. To make all different size rings. And as you can see, I done labeled mine, kind of labeled them. Not very good, but kind of, I know what it means. One of my favorite things about making spoon rings is just the process of finding the right kind of spoon. And this is some that I got at a flea market. And it's a real pretty pattern that I like. As you can see, I got a whole set, different size ones. And then I got some over here. And this was uh, my favorite pattern of all time is the, uh, is the Narcissus. And I believe it's from 1935. I like that one a lot. And it's good if you can buy in a set like this. And if you can work a deal with somebody and say, Hey, uh, can I buy the whole set from you? Instead of buying them from you one at a time. And can you do a discount? And uh, I'll make you a biscuit. Okay, craftsman. How, thank you for that. But now how come, how do you be making your spoon rings? Well, first of all, you're going to need your spoon. And I'm going to show you all a couple of examples right here. And I'm going to say we'll start with the Narcissus, one of my favorite ones. And first of all, what I do is I remove the bowl. And then what I want to do is I want to get rid of that hard edge right there. You don't want to cut somebody. And you want the edge to be rounded. I got my blank ready to go. I just need to know what size to make the ring. In this case, I want to make it a size 8. And so I pick from this, that's 18 millimeters, which I know 18 millimeter diameter is pretty close to a size 8 ring. I got me a little reference chart that says for what size that you want to make it, the circumference and the diameter. And also, you could measure against it to see how far you wanted to cut your metal. But in this case, we're making a spiral ring, so it didn't really matter. And I'm going to use my nylon jaws because if I don't, 
I might scratch this pretty uh, texture and surface. So I'm going to load it in like this and just start bending it. And I'm going to take special care on that end to get it nice and smooth. I'm going to flip it over because I'm making a spiral ring. Sometimes you might need to negotiate with using a rubber, a rubber uh, mallet. So far, we got a pretty curve, a curvature to it that looks pretty good, but that's not what we want. We need to close up that gap. How can we do that? I'll show you. Now we want to check the size. All right, I can see that the eight is right here. This ring needs to be snug just a little bit more to bring it down to a size eight ring. This is called a ring mandrel. So I'm simply going to swap out with the smaller size. As you can see, that puts it about a seven and a half. So how can we fix that easily? All you gotta do, uh oh, hold on. Let me get my camera fixed. All right. All you gotta do is kind of beat on it. All right, that goes eight right there. That looks about right. And for a spiral ring, sometimes you might could even make it a little bit larger. Notice that I did not have to use a torch. I didn't have to anneal it. I didn't have to remove any fire scale from it. I just cut it and bent it. Nice and smooth. Then if you want to polish it, then you can just use the polish of your choice. If it's very dirty, then you might want to use some steel wool. This one right here got a lot of tarnish on it. What can we do about it? Well, if it needs a little more aggressive, uh, aggressive touch, then you can use steel wool. It's a little abrasive, so on a real fine piece of uh, actual silver or silver plate, you might not want to use steel wool. But I like to do it in some cases where it's got a lot of tarnish on it. As you can see, it shines it right up. I almost need to put my sunglasses on. All right, let's say that I do not want to make a spiral ring, but I want to make one that's straight, nice and straight. All right, first of all, we got to look at our little helpful chart and see this right here will tell me that is, that's the circumference stretched out on a piece of paper. So I know that if I want to make a size, let's say I want to make that size eight ring, but make it straight, then I just come right here and I know where I need to cut my piece. All 
All right, the way I start out for my straight ring is I work on one side and then, the, and then the other side and then I do the middle. Let me show you what I mean. Then I flip it over. And then I can work on the middle. All right. And then you might need to get out your negotiator. As you can notice, we have a little problem. The ends don't line up exactly like we want them to. How can we fix this? Very easily. All right, that looks much better. All right, and we done made two spoon rings, and it didn't take us all day to do it. So now we can sell them at a reasonable, economical, affordable price. I would like to say that the Pepe Tool Company uh, have not contacted me about doing this, about showing how to use uh, their bending tool. It's just something that I really like. And if any of y'all out there have an interest in making uh, spoon rings, and if you like me, try to do it as a supplemental income, then I would feel like this would be a good uh, something that you can add up to your uh, tool list. And I have a link for how to get it in the description. That's Amazon. And like I always tell y'all full disclosures, that that goes, if y'all buy it through my link, then Amazon will be giving me a little uh, bonus, a little kickback money. And that'll help me to keep making these videos and things. Thank y'all so much for watching another one of my videos. I get a lot of uh, emails, comments, and messages about, hey, craftsman. Are you okay? Are you still alive? We have not heard from you in a while. Well, I just want y'all to know that even if I don't be steady videoing, that I always be steady crafting.